Thank you very much. And it's a joy to be here tonight and to represent Dudley. Lots of you may never have heard of Dudley. <laughs> what I would say is it's a place bigger in population than Cardiff, and yet probably half the people in this room have no idea where it is. And if you want to know what leveling up means, it means discovering where Dudley is and the value of its people. Please do it. It's a delight to sit opposite Matt Hancock at dinner. Um, just frustrated, no PowerPoint tonight, so I can't say next slide, please. And we won't go into what he ate in Australia. Well, there are 66 books in the Bible, not just one. There are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In them, we find the teaching of Jesus, well worth reading. In the old days, they were written on rolls of, parliament, of parchment. You could roll out one of those scrolls the length of this room. If you took the scroll for John's Gospel, opened it out, you would find right in the middle this verse. Chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So friends, we need to think very seriously before denying life. We need to think seriously before denying the reality of love. For a Christian who is straight like me, the choices are fairly simple, and I'm quite traditional. I can marry or I can live a celibate life. But what about someone who is not? Many years ago, you think this is a new issue, when I was 18, like some of you, maybe you're a bit older. Many years ago, I was at a conference about Christian marriage. That's just how traditional I was. The main speaker was inspiring. Afterwards, we broke into twos and threes to discuss. The two young men behind me were both teachers. This was years ago in the 70s. They were the first openly gay couple I'd ever met. We didn't talk about it then. They said that as Christians, they'd agreed with everything the speaker had said about the value of lifelong, loving, faithful marriages for the couple and for society. As two gay men, they wanted to be able to marry each other as Christians. And I thought then, and I still think now, why not? Why deny love? Why deny them abundant life? We believe in marriage in the church. It's a good way to live. St. Paul has been quoted tonight. Well, he said this in the first letter of Corinthians, to the unmarried I say that it's well for them to remain unmarried as I am. But if they are not practicing self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. A choice then, to be celibate and single as Paul was, or to be married as I am. All very well and good if you're heterosexual like me, you can live a very enjoyable, conventional life. But what if you're not and you wish to live a Christian life? Is celibate singleness your only choice? That's great if it really is a choice. But if it's the only option you're being given, is that really a choice at all? Could repressing your natural instincts and desires be hazardous in the end, cause you to burn up just as St. Paul warned here? There are a few isolated texts in the Bible wholly negative about sexual acts between men, as they are generally negative about any casual sex outside marriage, despite all the excitement of different relationships we do read of in the Bible. But none of them, none of these texts are talking about what we're here tonight to talk about. Faithful, one person to one person relationships for life. Point of information. Denied, you've had your chance. <laughs> <clears throat> really, he's much cleverer than me, so it's best to deny. <laughs> Same sex was not an option then for marriage. It's not now, and not a single one of those negative texts are addressing 
that question. How could they? The only words of Jesus about marriage are a response, not about same-sex questions, but to a specific question about marriage and divorce and his desire to protect those being wrongfully divorced, those women. It talks of men and women marrying, but it's not surprising as that was the only option for a marriage in that context. We need to look deeper within scripture. It's not good for man to be alone. It says that right at the beginning of Genesis. But homosexual men and women have been told for too long by the church, they've no choice but to be alone. Celebrate friendships or joining a monastery are just right if that's your calling. But what if it's not? What if it's not your choice at all? And what of loving kindness, the central attribute of God in the Old Testament? Hezeth, if you speak Hebrew, which I'm sad I don't, but that's the word. Loving kindness, mercy is central. The mercy of God shown above all, we believe, in Jesus Christ's death on the cross. God's amazing grace, the only way we get to heaven, not through our own righteousness of life, but through the righteousness of him who gave his life for you and for me. I was once a vicar of Holy Trinity Stratford-on-Avon, where Shakespeare is buried. Shakespeare knew his Bible well, and on mercy, loving kindness, he wrote these words. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath, it is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. It is mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the heart of kings. It is an attribute of God himself. And earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. So sisters and brothers, I commend those on this side of the house. This is a difficult thing to speak into. But sisters and brothers, tonight, choose mercy, choose love, choose life, and support this motion. Thank you.